Boys Lines. As Boys Lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold As Lions podcast. Well, welcome once again to the As Bold As Lions podcast. This is Derek Charles Johnson. So glad to have you join me today just to take these next few minutes out of your day, out of your week, and out of your life to join me. Um, just talking about some some Christmas songs. That's what we've been doing all month here in December. And hope you're getting into the Christmas spirit, I guess, the, the mood of Christmas. I don't know what that exactly looks like for you um, or, you know, what you have to do to kind of get your mind maybe into that place. But just, I guess, being excited about Christmas. Maybe that's just getting into the spirit of things. And um, beyond the trees and the trimmings and the cookies and the, the presents and all that, uh, every year it's my goal to just say, how do I push past all that Lord and, and just see you through, through all, uh, of the noise, I guess that we can kind of get caught up. Not, not necessarily bad things. Um, I love those aspects of Christmas, just like everybody else who celebrates does, um, love being with family, love being with friends. And, uh, but I just, I, I always want to keep my focus where it needs to be. So sometimes, uh, I have to find things that help me through the month and through the season to, to keep that. And so hopefully if you've caught any of these podcasts or maybe this is the first one you, you've listened to, this will help you in that regard. These are songs that, um, have been compiled either from last year or this year in conjunction with a blog that I do over at DerekCharlesJohnson.com. You can click on the As Bold as Lions tab, and that can take you to uh, the blogs that I write, a weekly blog. And furthermore, if you'd like to get those in your email inbox, uh, along with a couple devotionals every week, and uh, have some devotionals this month just centered on Christmas, um, would love to have you sign up. And again, same spot, As Bold as Lions tab, there's a spot to put your email in and uh, sign up. So just some uh, those types of things out of the way before we dive in today. The uh, song this week is, uh, again, an old song. Like this is every time we, we kind of shake the dust off this one and pull it out once again, uh, we have to realize there's there's some deep history behind some of these, especially this one today. And it's called O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And the um, the thing about some of these songs, like the, I talked about um, What Child Is This, this song, a few others, there's, uh, again, that minor feel to the song, almost just kind of this, uh, I hate to use this word in, in terms of Christian music, but uh, almost this haunting type of feel, and it's not meant to, to haunt anybody, but just kind of that that capacity that um, it almost gives you goosebumps when you when you hear it and listen to it and the the, the arm uh, hair kind of stands up at least it does for me um, maybe I'm weird but uh, just kind of the structuring of, of chords and just the way it's all kind of formulated together this song does that really well once again kind of minor a little bit of a sad, melancholy type of a feel. And then it does have that major lift once again. I'm getting into music theory um, a little bit here, but talked about that before. And it's once once again just kind of this brilliant aspect of this song. And deeper than that, we have to just realize, hey, God gave some people uh, just creative talents and abilities to, to write these things and to put these chords together and to make it sound that way. So when we sing them, we're benefiting uh, also from that gifting that he's given to someone else. And um, furthermore, we all have our gifts and we all have our talents. It may not be musical, maybe something else, but everybody's gift is important and needed in the kingdom. 
All right, enough there um, as we dive in. Just wanted to say that, you know, getting back to just the, uh, the, the age of this song, we're, as I was studying about each of these, I kind of try to figure out when they were written, um, what's the context, all of that sort of thing. Um, but it's, this is perhaps one of the oldest songs that we, we sing at Christmas. And as I was diving in, it's, it was unclear just how old it is, but the text itself, um, remember a lot of times it's, it's the text, the, the lines, the verses that are written, and it's almost just a, a poem or something that's recited before it's ever a song, before there's ever like melody added to it. So the text is thought to be as old as the 8th or 9th century. So it was recited in, in monasteries, you know, by monks, and they have this, this, O come, O come, Emmanuel, ransom captive. Like, they're reciting this as far back as the 8th or 9th century. So very old. And I think it's just cool that when we, when we do sing these songs, in any, you know, any type of, of song, really, in, in church, um, liturgy or hymnody or, or whatever. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but the, the hymn catalog of songs and whether it's modern or, or more, um, in years past and even back, like we're, we're singing things that have been in churches and in, um, fellowships in Christian circles for, for a very long time. And it, it just kind of, I don't know, it just, it's just a cool thought to me to, to be like, over time there's this cloud of witnesses like Hebrews talks about that are, uh, have run this race ahead of us and they're, they're, you know, cheering us on and so to speak up, up in heaven. But there's this cloud of witnesses and, and we get to partner in that. You know, one day if, if the Lord tarries, we're, we're joined up with that. And, uh, and so, that uh, that is always something, especially as I look at any of these songs at Christmas. That there's history there, and that's that's just a cool thing to me. Not history for its its own sake or tradition, but just why has this song been passed down from from year to year, from century to century? It just means the impact of it, the truth that uh, it speaks of is timeless, and it it needs to keep being told and retold um, until Christ comes back. song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, it's about longing and hope. This title or this um, line, Ransom Captive Israel, from the first verse, that, that grabs hold of me. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, Ransom Captive Israel, the, the exile of Israel, the brokenness of this land, spiritually speaking, is a means to, to call forth Jesus' coming. Come and heal. Come and restore. Come and bring us out of this bondage that we are in. And into that freedom, we rejoice. We, we praise you. That's uh, the, this refrain. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. It's, um, you know, in, in this song throughout. And just that longing to sing, Jesus, we need you. And we need you now as much as when you came to this earth. We, we still need you. And we can sing this song and say we're, there's still people in, in bondage and captive to sin who, who need to know that hope, who need to be freed, who need to be aware of the redemption power that is in Jesus Christ. Would you come? Would you show us that? Would you, would you reveal yourself to us? This 
song also has this contrast of, of light and dark. And I think that's just marvelously weaved in with the, the major and the minor, because I think you can kind of play off of those different things, um, very well with, with the, the words we're actually singing and, and also just the, the feeling through, through the music itself. So there's this, this light and dark, the, the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows, you know, reminds me of Psalm 23. Um, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, we're thinking about things that are, are dark and looming. And, and, uh, if we think about death and sin, like that's all wrapped up into that. But we know, um, from the promises of the Bible that Jesus came to abolish those things. John 1, 4, and 5 says, In him, in Christ, was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus' advent, his coming to earth, means that darkness is defeated. The birth of Christ is the beginning of the end for those who walk in darkness. The culmination is, is Christ's sacrifice and his resurrection, and it gives us hope and it allows for our hearts to rejoice. Finally, what is of this word Emmanuel, uh, either spelled with an E or an I, but meaning the same thing? Um, to study the meaning of the word, we, we only need to review scripture. Matthew 1, 22, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. It says right there, which means God with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel, O come, God, and be with us, um, fellowship with us. Um, that, that, that longing that we have is really wrapped up in this, this promise of Christmas which can, can be just put, put one word on Christmas, it's Emmanuel. God with us, God among us, God dwelling in the flesh, walking our streets, feeling what we feel, and experiencing everything that we experience. That is an amazing thing to consider. Like just pull back from everything about Christmas and just consider the word Emmanuel, that that is what Christmas is about. And there's no other religion that can say that about their God. There's not one. So amazing. Guys, I again want you to consider this week the power of the lyrics as we sing through these songs each Christmas season. It can become very rote and mechanical just to, to sing them and not really think about them a whole lot deeper. And I, I'm, I'm talking to myself here because I'm, I'm that way with a lot of, uh, music. And, you know, these words are not, um, they're not canonical, if I'm saying that right. They're not out of, uh, divine inspiration that somehow needs to be put into scripture. They're not, they're, they're, they're not scripture, but they are reflections of scripture. And I think everything with the music is that way. Unless we're talking about the Psalms, which are songs literally in the pages of the Bible. But that influence that they take is and should bring us into a knowledge of truth. And during this time, we need to keep going back to that in order to just proclaim it to ourselves first and to those around us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Why do we sing this? Well, it's because Jesus came and he's coming again. So we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We need to have our hearts in a posture of, of worship and just receiving all that Jesus wants us to, to hear during this time. And maybe... Just listening through this song today and considering its lyrics, it's just a time for you to pause and just say, Lord, recenter me, refocus me, come into my life uh, again and just um, help me as I wrap up this year. And it's been a crazy year, just like last year was, and there's been a lot of things that we face, but 
help me to have a posture of, of just being after you more than after the things you can do for me, after the relationship with you and about all of that so that I can go into next year ready for what, what you want to do in my life and in this world through me. Guys, I, I thank you so much for just taking the time to, to dig in once again to these songs. I personally just love doing this. Um, and even if I was the only one who who liked this, I probably would still do it because I'm I'm just putting together two things that I really love, which is music and, and ministry and and talking about it. So uh I will put the, the YouTube link in for O Come O Come Emmanuel into the show notes. That's a song that I did last year, part of last year's blogs and um you can go back and, and hit any of those from YouTube if you're so inclined. And um, the biggest thing, guys, is just proclaiming uh, that Messiah has come, proclaiming Emmanuel has come, and that we would just let the whole world hear. Just going to send us out with our closing verse today, Ephesians five fifteen through 17. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. God bless you guys. Hey guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson. You have been listening to the As Bold As Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share. And head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.